Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. And I'm currently out at the titanium mine right now. I decided to come out here and get out of the canister set up for the gold. And I do have a really rich deposit here. And I spent a little bit of time here, so I thought I wanted to get a couple of stacks because I want to make some more conveyor connectors. Uh, one of the things I've started thinking about was uh, trying to keep everything sort of organized. I got enough room for another half stack. There we go. Uh, a little more organized uh, as far as the inventory goes. Or the, not the inventory, the inv inventory system. What am I hit, hitting the wrong button there? Hit C instead of V. Uh, but I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to be able to get other things being produced automatically, like uh, composites, for instance, because I need to add the biomass. At the same time, too, I've noticed that the containers we just dropped off with the cobalt and the xanite and all that stuff, they're starting to fill up with other stuff, uh, like water from the water pumps. And the reason why water was going in there and was getting used up is because apparently I was out of carbon too. So that means we I get a, a carbon miner set up just for the, the, the water. And yes, I am going the right way. I wanted to go check out this uh, ship on the way back. Uh, as I was flying over this way, I saw a little glint in the water there, or in the ground. And I thought maybe we'll go take a look at it. A um, couple of people have been, uh, suggest, uh, asked me too about using the, the long conveyors. I have built, I've built so many conveyors ever since I started playing this game. I'm so used to the one by ones and the four long and the eight long are actually like really new to me and. You know, old habits are hard to break. Uh, there has been a few other, uh, I guess, requests about trying to get builds going with large air blades, and we will be getting into them. They are kind of expensive, and they are quite big. One of those large air blades is actually bigger, like, much bigger than this tiny little thing I'm flying right now. So that is... That's where the trouble is. If you don't really know the scale of those things... Uh, look back, season one was in late 90s, 95, 97, somewhere around there. And look for the helicarrier build. I uh, revamped that thing with the large air blades. And those things are huge. I think I measured them at 13 by 13. So they're pretty big. But we're coming up to the, the little wreckage here. You gotta admit this thing it flies pretty good. So I saw something right around here. I uh, know we checked this out before. I think we did. Yeah, because I was snooping around. But I saw something like right around here. I thought I'd just dig around a little bit, see if we can find anything. Maybe we'll back up so this thing doesn't land on my little flyer here. Make sure there's no badness around. Crickets. I've never heard crickets before. Alright. Oh, that's what that is. It's the beacon. So can we actually get this? That doesn't let us take it. That's what I saw up there. So what is the whole purpose of this thing? Like, do I need something to get into it? I can't do anything with it. Well, let's dig it up. See what happens. Maybe I'll fly off. Oh, I just gotta watch my back. <laughs> Guess there's actually no purpose for these. Other than decoration. No clue. Hmm. It's not radioactive. I think I'm gonna have to try to drag this home one day. Let's see if we can loosen this side up a little bit. See if this will knock it free. I've tried digging up monuments before. Sometimes you get a little piece of dirt stuck inside it, and since the dirt 
doesn't actually have any gravity. See, like there's a chunk right here, but as you can see in the upper left, I can't actually access the dirt. All I get is the, the wreck. So, I do not know. I think there would be something else around, like a, a box or something, right? Hmm, weird. Anyway, I'm going to hop back in my little flyer and I'll meet you back at the lab. And I'm back. So as you can see, I cleaned up the front area a little bit. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the wall, uh, or the control panel. Uh, this is going to be elaborated a little bit more because I've been thinking about how to automate things a little bit better. Like some of these ones that are just straight out the miner, I'll just be able to leave them running all the time. But I think for, you know, for instance, these ones here, uh, for the ones that require, let's say, iron and carbon and aluminum, like the, the Mark II plating that's being produced right over here, uh, all I would have to do is just hit a switch, you know, turn on the printer, turn on, connect the miner and connect the container, so that way it just tries to keep things where it should be. Uh, one of the things I did want to do, and I've been wanting to do this for a while, is I want to sort of explore the mechanics of the conveyor, figure out how, why it choose, where it, des where it decides to put things, uh, like in what order, or containers, and and whatnot, you know what I mean? Like, I tried tried figuring this out last season. I was trying to sort of find a way to push it, items out of the printer into containers. The only way you can really do that is just by um, leaving the inventory full. But choose trying to decide what side it actually outputted it to was a whole other story. Okay, good, that does have power. Alright, so what I'm going to do is... I get a container, some small containers on my bar here. Uh, I have been thinking about how it decides how to do it. Like if I go ahead and just put a container on the side here and a container on this side here, is it going to go to this container automatically before this one because this one was placed first? So this one would be 39, and this one would be 40. So does it go by ID? Does it go by position? I was trying to figure out before which direction it was going to output from the two. So I do have some iron and some carbon on here. So let's go ahead and craft one frame. Find out what's which. Actually, no. I gotta. I actually have to fill up the inventory. I gotta force it out. Uh, as far as other mechanics of the game like how it chooses where it pulls from it's going to take the first stock in the first container but what containers does it pull from like what's the hierarchy what's the order that it goes does things to so let's see which container this goes into so it goes into this one all right so let's take that out now let's try something see if it goes by actual id we'll take that container off then we'll put this one on first because this one will become Small container 41, small container 42. Now if it goes into this container, then that proves that it goes by block ID. No, it goes into this container again. Alright, well, now this is another one I want to try. Let's see what happens when we throw some extra containers into the mix. So we'll put that one there, we'll put a T-section on here, and then we'll put another straight, and another container. So now, is it going to go into this container, or is it going to go into this container, because this container is closer? We shall find out. Experimenting with BC is always so much fun. Ah! Went to this side this time. I wonder if it's because it's closer. Let's try it again. Is it closer or is it because of the connection? Alright, so I put it in here again. So now, let's take all this off. So we know that it's going to take the shortest route. Or this port. 
At least that's what we think. So let's see if that's actually the connector doing it. So we'll put three con conveyors there. And then we'll just put two, but one of them will have the T. So we'll put a container on there and container on there. Now, if it's going to take the shortest route, it's going to end up in this container here. It's going to take the closest ex access point as like this contain container is next to the line, whereas on this line, the container is behind another access point, another con conveyor joint. So let's see what happens here. Thank God it only takes five seconds to make a plate. All right, so it takes the shortest route. Okay, so that is good to know. So now here's Hang on, give me a second here. Okay, so now let's try something else here. So we'll go ahead and we'll make this our short side. We'll go ahead with a couple containers on this one. We're actually gonna go two containers this time. Because what I wanna do I want to see if we fill this container up and we make this container three long, uh, three away, is it going to go into this one or is it going to go into that one because it's the next available in the line? Or the, technically the closest inventory. I don't know if anybody's actually experimented with this stuff. Alright, so now we go in here. And I'll just take some, take some plates. Sure, it'd be nice if there was a way just to pull one. Oh. Okay, so now that is technically full. Let's go ahead and craft another frame. And it should go into this box here. Okay, so it does. So, if you ever want to keep storage from being filled up and what you want to do is basically you just want to make your conveyors as long as possible do a couple of switchbacks too like so we go like that do a couple of switchbacks right so that way you get yourself some distance so no matter what even if I were to add, let's say, another 10 more small containers on here, all those containers will fill up before it fills up this one, even though this one's technically closer. So it's good to know that it comes in handy when uh, dealing with stuff like this. When you're trying to keep stuff from flooding the system, like even up there. I think it's because all the containers are basically in the same spot. Uh, if you run up there quickly, I should have put a door on this side. I never did. But you will see, oh, I'm stuck on that stupid door frame. Uh, let's get up here. So my main access, uh, my main input was on this side here. So that's why you can see that everything's, well, everything was in these containers here. And this one, because these are the closest to the actual line. So these two would probably have been, these four here would have been closer than these two. So these four would have filled up first, then it would have filled up this one, then it would have filled up probably these two. It's hard to say. Uh, one thing I do know is it will not, it will not look for a stack that's already in the inventory and fill it up. That is something that some people have had issues with. And I could have gone the other way, but I didn't. Because I like doing things the hard way. I just walked right to that door frame. So yeah, that is that. Now, there was another thing I was wanted to do, and I can't remember what it was. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to do. Uh, talking about big air blades here. I did make uh, a couple of those super alloy mechanical parts. Let's go see how big this thing really is. So we're going to head over to the loader here, or to the train, 
And I'm just going to place one down somewhere. And let's just see how big this thing is. So there you go. It's about as big as my loader. Just massive. It uses a lot of power too. Oh yeah. A couple of, couple of people actually asked why I didn't use these on here. Well, now you can see why. Let's see if we can actually stick it on the front here. And why are you not connecting? Too much stuff in the way, that's why. Things are big. Oh, because I don't have enough frames on me. Ha ha ha. Uh, give me a second. Okay. I had a whole bunch being printed because I plan on using hover pads soon. Because I'm going to need a lot of them for this thing. Why is this not snapping here? Oh, because they're sticking out. That's why. Okay. Um, where will this thing go? Where can we put it? The problem is it has that three block high space. Yeah, I got nowhere I can put it on here. Uh, hmm. That will just throw a block on the front of it. I gotta plant it anyways. So I'll we'll just place that there and presto. That's how big they are. So yeah, uh, there are things I can use them for. I do have projects I am going to use them for. Uh, the train just wasn't going to work. It's just going to be about three times as wide as it is. Okay, so I have I have been getting a lot of stuff being made. I got a bunch of stuff for the conveyor connectors and uh, a lot of stuff for hover pads. So we're going to be able to get some switches going. So let me uh, get a few things together. That's actually one thing I wanted to do is get the gotta get that water off the line and other things. So let me get a uh, game plan going and I'll bring you back. Alright, originally I was thinking about trying to get uh, the, those powered gates down here to try to, you know, set them up on switches so uh, at least that way uh, the printers or anything doesn't flood anything back into the system. But I think the best thing I can probably do now is since we know that the conveyors that the the conveyors will access the closest inventory in the line all I have to do to keep these things from filling up with what's called junk is to bring probably bring this one out about here or we can bring it back up over down and then we'll have probably a T section in here somewhere maybe even up here and then we'll do a couple of switchbacks, just get, you know, 30 or 40 meters of conveyor pipes going. So in that way, this will be furthest than anything else around here. And that includes these containers up top here. So that means i got to find out where that access point is, which is over there. And let's see how many actual conveyor pipes we have to go through here. So, yeah, I might have to get... Probably about six rows, to be honest. It's nothing new for me. I got the resources, I can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bear the leg on this. Actually, we'll disconnect this together. I'm just going to go from here, right back over to the side there. Get that tool out. Yes, that's real lag. <laughs> Definite. Okay, and now we're just going to disconnect it here. Uh, that's what happens when you separate two, two conveyor systems. Because all these containers are actually connected to each other. So, yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and take all this stuff out. And relay it. I'm going to get another, like I said, another conveyor line. I might even get it to go up, run across here, come across, and then maybe down next to this junction box, and then do a switch back here before it feeds in the line, or 
goes around here, around the corner, then tees off and does the switchbacks. Uh, all right, because uh, at this point, I don't think block count's really going to matter. So I shall see you in a few moments. And there we have it. Uh, I may have gone a little bit overboard on them, but I just want to make sure that there's more than enough uh, distance between the system and these containers. Um, there's probably a lot of you thinking right now, why didn't you use the long ones? Why didn't you use the long ones? Well, the reason I didn't use the long ones is one, I'm so used to using these things, it's just the first thing I think of is just, oh, you need a conveyor section, I'll grab that one. Uh, two, though, I wanted to, I didn't actually check this out, we're actually going to test this right now. Uh, as far as the distance goes, is it just going by like actual length or is it counting block sections? So we're going to go ahead and take all this apart again, get these off, and yeah, <laughs> that's how building anything on this, this foundation is right now. I don't even know how many parts they have. If they could, if they can uh, implement the part count along with the, the weight in the center of mass, that'd be great. And that way we can figure out how many parts we have and how many conveyors and whatnot. But, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and put one of these here. And then we'll go ahead and put a four on this side. Uh, no, it's way down here. So I'll grab that one. We'll put that one on there. And we'll fill that in. And now I should make... That's the wrong color. Because that was... I, uh... Kind of missed a spot on the floor out back there. Give it the wrong color. But yeah, you gotta do it this way. So, this way. Now we have two sections on here and only one section on here, but this is only going two blocks. This is only going, this is going four. So let's see what happens with this. And there's that container. And I really, really, really gotta start using these hot bars. And I know I say that every time and I never do, but. That's what happens when you're forgetful. All right, so empty, empty. All right, let's craft a frame and see where it goes. I have a feeling it's gonna be in this box. No, aha. Uh -huh. So it counts this whole four block length as one section and these as two. So it actually will choose the path of least resistance. That is very, very interesting. So if you want to do something like what I'm doing here where you're trying to separate containers from a system to prevent them from filling up, this is definitely the way to go because it's it's counting each one of these individual blocks. If I had used the, the eight longs, then it would only be counting each one of these rows as maybe two or three sections. So that is definitely interesting. It's a good thing I checked that out because I wanted to test that out. I wasn't sure if that was connected or not. I'm going to have to lower that down next time we move that container out. Uh, which we will. Oh, that's the titanium one. Yeah, we'll be going back there anyways. And hopefully they'll get the miners up and running again. I haven't had I any issues with them, so that's good. But now with this all being figured out and that being fit straightened out, then I'll be able to keep my inventory system a little bit better. But I'm going to get a few things done off camera. Uh, like try to get some other, these other machines set up. Now that I know how this whole storage system is going to work. I don't have to worry about these containers filling up. Because if you go over here, well, that's a bad example. Because I've been using that as my stash box. As you'll see in a moment. So yeah, it's titanium, gold fabrics, everything in there. Yeah, it definitely adds a bit of leg to the system. See, like, we even get water in here. And that was because at one point in time, the water pump was closest to this container than anything else. But now it's got nowhere to go but to go up there. And I'm actually... I forgot to check to see if you can actually configure these water pumps to not output to a container. I really do have to keep this door open. Alright, 
can we actually configure these? Oh, we can. Good, because when the system runs out of carbon, then it starts filling up with dirty water, which is never a good thing. But anyways, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.